Hi guys, welcome back to another video. Dr. Connor here again, and we're going to go through a few more questions now for the MAF, MFDS exam. I'm trying to hit a few of the topics that do come up the most often so we can kind of find out um, what we need to focus on and certain questions that commonly come up and, and start to repeat themselves as well. So let's jump in. So our first question is, which one of the following is not an antifungal drug? This is, a, this, is a, this is a nice one to get started with. It's quite straightforward. So our options here are myconazole, fluconazole, acyclovir, nystatin, and etraconazole. So they're asking us which one is not an antifungal, antifungal drug. Myconazole, fluconazole, A, B, D, and E, they're all antifungal drugs. Acyclovir is an antiviral drug. So in this case... Uh, C, acyclovir, is the correct answer because that's not an antifungal drug. Uh, number two, when a patient has fractured their zygoma, which nerve is commonly damaged leading to paresthesia or anesthesia? Is it the ID nerve, the facial nerve, the intraorbital nerve, the supraorbital nerve, or the supratrochlear nerve? Okay, this is actually a really, really good topic, and this comes up quite a lot, this topic of trauma, um, and it, it's usually either focused around the zygoma or the mandible, um, so it's really important to know the anatomy associated with those uh, two things uh, in, in good detail. Um, and I, this can this can expand then into a part two question as well. It could you know list five complications of a fractured zygoma as well. Uh, but if we look at this question, um, the supraorbital and supratrochlear nerve they're they're not going to really be damaged or wouldn't commonly be damaged in anyway by uh, trauma to the zygoma. The ID nerve as well fits into that category. Wouldn't commonly be be damaged. The facial nerve and the infraorbital nerve are probably really what it, what it comes down to here. But if you understand the anatomy of the zygoma. The one that's most commonly going to be damaged is the infraorbital nerve. Okay, and moving on to number three, a rest for a removable partial denture must be designed to A, transmit the forces horizontally on an abutment, B, trans transmit the forces along the long axis of the tooth, prevent the clasp from slip slipping cervically on a tooth, or a combination of A and C and B and C. Um, well, definitely we, we don't we don't want to transmit the forces horizontally. So that takes answers A and D out straight away. Um, it they do transmit the forces along the long axis of the tooth, but they do also prevent the clasp from from slipping uh, cervically. So I think probably the best answer here would be option E, which is answers B and C. Okay, number four, a denture, another denture question. A denture which has a bilateral free end, partially a dentulous saddle is classified as, okay, so these are these are Kennedy classifications. These come up all the time. They're, they're always asked, they're always asked in part one, they're always an asked then in, in part two as well. Um, and so it's, it's really, really important to know these Kennedy classifications because they're easy points to score and they, they will always be asked about. So it's a, a bilateral free and saddle is Kennedy class one, two, three, four, five. Um, definitely no up as far as Kennedy class one, two, three, and four. I I do think that there are a Kennedy class five and six. Um, I think I have seen a few diagrams talking about five and six as well. No, definitely no one to four and how to do the modifications on those classes as well. Um, that that's a very very common question to get asked um, but the answer here a bilateral free end saddle is a kennedy class one so our last question here on this one is the correct treatment of a patient with anug which i think is probably more commonly called nug now um, is a 20 percent chlorhexidine mouthwashes twice daily b amoxicillin 500 milligrams three times a day for five days erythromycin four times for seven days with the chlorhexidine at 20 percent uh, d scaling and oral hygiene instruction only or e uh, metronidazole 400 three times a day five days uh, with hydrogen peroxide mouthwash twice daily um, now this is single best i the the best answer here is is metro uh, with the scaling and the the oral hygiene as well, um, but this we can't pick D and E here. So the the best option here is is going to be Metro, with the hydrogen peroxide. 
a amoxicillin, you know, it, it's an anaerobic infection, so that's not going to do anything. Erythromycin, the same, 20% chlorhexidine in mouthwash. I don't even think there are 20% chlorhexidine in mouthwashes. Um, so Metro here is the, is the correct answer. Uh, that's it for this video. Um, if you did find this useful or if you want me to make keep, keep making more of these videos, please do let me know. Leave me a like, leave me a comment. Um, if I've got anything wrong, let me know as well. Um, okay, bye. Thank you.